Well, <coughs> you can go. Thank, thank you, Anita, and and, uh, and thanks everyone for coming out. Even though I I kind of badgered you there a little bit there at the beginning. Uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, I think this is the first one that I've done this year. Only one that I'm doing this year, right? Yep. We have to talk about next year. Okay. Well, that's that's fair. <laughs> Um, and so uh, I, they, they asked, you know, what I might be interested in talking about. And somehow in the last couple of years, like I've become the person that, that a number of people reach out to to do uh, national register nominations for, for bridges, historic bridges. And so now all of a sudden, like if, you, if you're the only person doing it, it's kind of like you become the expert at it. And so um, I told a friend of mine just yesterday who, we were having a conversation and I said, you know, I have just a plethora of, a, of useless information in my head. So uh, this, is, this is part of that, that information. But I hope you enjoy it. Um, bridges do kind of conjure up, you know, something that's kind of special. And, and um, so we'll kind of walk through that, but I'd like to have just kind of a conversation toward the end about what it is that you think, you know, uh, draws us to Bridges. Okay, that that's fine. I was using okay. the keys. That, that's fine. I, I, I'm not great with uh, with the little the pad and stuff up here, but I, I can switch to that. That's no problem. I'll just struggle along. And and I apologize in advance. I'm kind of in the midst of a summer cold. I'm not contagious, uh, but I I might have to clear my throat every once in a while. I'll, I'll leave the room if I have to. But, uh, so <clears throat> Anita was saying, and I appreciate the the introduction. Um, she, she read it just like I wrote it. So, uh, but, um, so uh, this year I celebrated just like a week ago. I celebrated 15 years in business, and so um, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to maps and such. Uh, I probably wrongfully, you know, gave that to my son. He's the same way, and he actually put me in touch with this map software that, that does this. But those are the counties I've worked in, and and it kind of goes by every five years. So in the upper part of the state, that's kind of the first five years. And then the, the, the middle kind of green color uh, is the second five years, and that darker green is just the counties that I've, I've worked in in the last five years. But uh, I love traveling Indiana. I mean, I, if you guys read my column about the, the back roads, traveling the back roads, I mean, that's, that's just part of my fun. And so um, a lot of what I do does not seem like work. And, my aunt pointed that out to me. She goes, she just thinks I just run all over the place. And I, I don't work. I really don't. So why are we drawn to bridges? Um, you know, think about that. You know, there's this kind of romantic idea about being drawn to a bridge. You know, you slow down when you drive across a bridge, and not just because you might wreck, but because you're just, you want to enjoy that, right? The, the, the view uh, looking out. But be thinking about that as we kind of, as I take you across and over uh, some of, of our bridges here in Indiana, just be thinking about what it is that draws you to that. So I'm going to talk about a few of my favorite bridges. Um, and, and most of these are here in Marshall County. Uh, so you'll recognize a few of these. So not to bring up bad memories, but, but how many remember this, you know, from 2018? So, um, you know, probably my favorite bridge in Indiana, I would say, is, is our little footbridge uh, down at the end of LaPorte Street, partly because it's so unusual. It is the oldest pedestrian bridge in the state. Um, it's, it's one of the last Rochester Bridge Company bridges that are built for that kind of purpose in, in Indiana. So here it is, the arrows pointing it out, uh, was, was uh, built or put up in 1898. And interestingly enough, you know, there, there used to be a vehicular bridge at that point, and the city wanted to build new bridges, and so uh, they put, you know, they, they, they arrived at a compromise, and they said, well, we'll put a new bridge at Garrow Street, but you guys get a pedestrian bridge. So um, it's kind of an interesting way that that kind of worked out. Instead of two car bridges, or I guess horse and wagon bridges at the time, so it went through restoration. I mean, we followed this restoration, but well, maybe before I should get to that point. So my wife and I were engaged on that bridge when it turned 100 years old. So that's that's a much younger version. Uh, we're celebrating 25 years this October. 
that's a younger version of us. Um, and then we drug our kids back to it, you know, after the flood waters have subsided in, in our, uh, at our uh, 20 year from the time that we got engaged. And so those are my kids. And then this is the bridge as it's going through restoration. Have you been across it since it's been restored? Seen it lit at night? Takes it to work every day. Takes it to work every day. So that's an example of a keen post trust, which those are unusual in and of their own right. So um, not only is it the oldest pedestrian bridge in Indiana, it's also like a pretty rare example. And there it is restored. I had to go out and get a picture of it when there was snow because you know that red really stands out in the snow. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. Worth every bit of how much was the price tag? <laughs> Two and a half million dollars. Yeah, another great, another great picture of it. And did everybody see the the ducks that were launched from the bridge? My mm -hmm. my wife, you know, is the director of the neighborhood center. She did that big quack out hunger fundraiser. Yeah. So you had to. You bought ducks, and the first three across the finish line on the river got, got a cash price. So now, uh, so this was a bridge that, that my dad would drive us across. And if you read my column, I talked about this in, in one of my columns, we called it the spook bridge. And we would beg to go, like when we came home from church on Sunday nights, we would beg to go off of Old 31 to you know drive over the Spook Bridge because we just thought that was a lot of fun. And I don't know if he was making up stories, but he would talk about things that happened you know around the property or around the bridge. And so this became one of those things that, I mean, I would go there and park with my buddies and, and sit there and watch the town lights, you know, back, back in La Paz. But this was built by the Baltimore, uh, oh, Baltimore and Ohio Railroad about 1890, maybe a little bit earlier, but at some point, I think it was while I was in college, the, the county and the railroad deemed that it was unsafe and so they replaced it. But it just was a fabulous span. It's one of the tallest, was one of the tallest spans in, in Marshall County. It's gone. And then sometimes you can make up stories to create a spook bridge. So this is uh, the Vandalia Railroad bridge that um, obviously the Vandalia Railroad is gone, but this is back at the corner of our property, just off the, just off of our property, and it goes over uh, the Seltonite Ditch. <clears throat> and um, Judy McCullough found a story about an old Civil War vet that lost his life on that bridge. So he was out hunting and grew tired and uh, was Deaf, I think, is, is, I understand the story correct. And so he was taking a break. He was resting on, on the bridge and was sitting by a train. So now, this is, this is part of, you know, things that I do that are inappropriate. So I used to teach Sunday school, you know, like third and fourth grade boys. Or, yeah, third and fourth grade boys. And we would have camp outs at our property. So I would take them down at night, you know, and point out the bridge. <laughs> And I would tell them that, that the old Civil War vet was out looking for his severed toe. And so, you know, of course, the kids loved it, right? Boys loved that kind of stuff. I added the ghost in there for... And then, has anybody... It's probably illegal to do this. Has anybody been up on this bridge? This is the, the Pennsylvania Railroad Bridge. See, she's very cautiously raising her hand. This is the Pennsylvania Railroad Bridge over the Yellow River. It is a fabulous structure. There was a... A gentleman, uh, Mr. Jim Cooper, who was Indiana's just absolute bridge expert, uh, wrote several books about Indiana bridges. And he called this the most overbuilt bridge that he had seen for a, for a pony trust kind of railroad bridge. Um, but again, captured it in the snow uh, just because it just stands out. So it's very beautiful. It has a, a plate that kids have tried to pull off of there. But on one of the uh, one of the beams, there's a plate that says, I think it's um, the American Bridge Company, and it's like 1902 or yeah, 1902. So now you guys are all going to go up there. Well, when you get caught by the police, don't tell them I'm the one that told you to go. 
And then these bridges, you know, you, you might recognize these. So that's Michigan Street Bridge, and then the other one is, um, excuse me, Jefferson Street Bridge. And both of those are examples that we call fill, filled spandrel bridges or arches. And <clears throat> what they do is they create the formwork, and then they, you know, add the concrete into the formwork, and then backfill it with dirt, and then put the, the deck on top. And so, if you remember when the Michigan Street Bridge was closed and they were restoring that, if you look down in there, you could see the cavities that were the tops of those concrete arches as they were refilling and repacking um, the fill inside. But uh, Daniel Luton was a Purdue uh, engineering professor, and he actually became famous countrywide, in fact, has some of his bridges in other countries, um, for his design of these, uh, these types of bridges. So he was a, just a master at, uh, at understanding how, uh, how to create those spans. Um, and the only way to see these really is to get in a kayak or a canoe, because then you can actually see the framework or the formwork from underneath. It's, it's pretty neat. Uh, and then the Lincoln Highway Bridge, of course, that was built in 1927 to carry the Lincoln Highway when they decided to route it, uh, this, route it south of South Bend. And then this is one that I kind of recently became aware of. Anybody seen this bridge before? <laughs> well, of course Derek has, because I, and RT, because we went out there to look at it. Um, so this, this little bridge here, what you're looking at is the third oldest concrete bridge in Indiana. And it's in Greenland. It's, it's across the, is that the North Fork? Is that what they call that, the, of the Yellow? Yeah. North Fork, right, of the Yellow River. Um, and this bridge, you know, like, now think about this. This was like brand new technology when this thing was built. And being the third oldest, the other, other two are in Terre Haute and Indianapolis. So now think about how forward thinking or advantageous the county commissioners were to actually use this kind of technology to build this bridge. But <clears throat> the interesting thing, if you notice the top photo, it does not have stonework on it. So when it was first built, they didn't put stonework on it, it was just concrete. And then they came back and they actually widened it like within just a few years and added the stonework. And then they did like a decorative uh, kind of mortar joint on it. But look how proud these people are of, of their bridge here, you know, after it's all completed and the stonework is on it. And my understanding is uh, Sunnyside, right? Sunnyside Park is on the other side. Shadyside. Shadyside, sorry. I get the two mixed up. So Shadyside was kind of opening up and they wanted to make sure that people, not only the ones arriving at the depot, which used to be right next to this bridge, but also the people who were visiting the park kind of had something nice to look at. And uh, part of my involvement in that was through uh, my role as county historian, uh, the county is actually looking at replacing this bridge. I know. Everybody moan for a moment. <laughs> All right. So, well, what are they going to replace it with? Something really ugly, I'm sure. <laughs> but I thought you were the one that's going to give them the drawn out drawings and tell them how to do it. Oh, you know, I don't do that. I, 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 I just make my voice known uh, as county historian. That's, that's about as best as I can do. But well, let's hope that it's a save. The interesting thing is the engineering company that came and looked at this, it said it needed replaced said that it needed replaced because the arches were failing. Well, if you look at it, the stonework, you know, think about that fake stone that they put on buildings today. Well, that's what's popping off. It's not that the arch is failing. So I, point, I pointed that out to the engineer. I'm sure they appreciated that. <laughs> so this is probably, like st statewide, this is probably my favorite bridge outside of Marshall County. Um, Partly because I really like the Art Deco style. So ha ha has anybody been to this bridge in Vincennes? It's just a fabulous, fabulous structure. And uh, built in 1932 as part of the, it was part of the Depression era kind of projects. And it you know, crosses the Wabash River there at Vincennes. And just as I mean, the lower photo obviously is a photo from when it was being constructed. But it just has these great figures carved into these giant piers that are on either side of the bridge. Um, because it, people thought of Vincennes as being the gateway to the West, you know, before St. Louis was. <laughs> if you're ever 
ever in Vincennes, go to the, the uh, George Rogers Clark Memorial, and this is right next to it. So, uh, so I'll talk a little bit about my work and, and probably move through this a little bit faster now. So um, when I get hired to do a National Register nomination for a historic bridge, these are the types of things that I have to look at uh, for the bridge to qualify and then um, how to justify uh, putting on the National Register. So I, yeah, you obviously have to know what the bridge type is. Um, what, in context of other bridges, not only locally, but also statewide, um, you have to put that bridge in context. So uh, is it the only King Post Trust in, you know, in Marshall County? Well, yeah, in fact, it's probably the only King Post Trust in Northern Indiana, the little pedestrian bridge. Um, you know, the builder, bridge fabricator, uh, the purpose of the span, and we might think that that's logical, but it's like the story that I told. Well, Plymouth was planning two bridges, but they decided to go with only one vehicular bridge and do the other one as a pedestrian bridge. So you have to kind of understand what's the point of the bridge. Um, context of the span within the region, so that's kind of looking at it from a standpoint of, okay, well, uh, unless we have this bridge at this location, um, nobody can get to the market, you know, on the other side of the river. It's kind of that kind of idea. And then uh, what they call period of significance. So when was the bridge built? That all, almost always starts the period. And then um, it ends when that transportation route no longer is, is a, uh, what, what they consider kind of important or significant or necessitated. So that's kind of it. This was actually... Very few things get listed that have been moved. Bridges are one thing that can get listed when they're moved. Uh, this was in Shelby County. They moved it to their town park um, and uh, made it a part of their, uh, their bikeway or bike trail in their park. And those are all kinds of different trusses. The most common ones that we have in Indiana are the Howe Trust and then the Bird Arch and the Arch. Those are in Warren, I should say Warren uh, Trust. Um, if you hear the, if you hear me say pony prat or anytime that that term pony, it's because it's a, a shorter version. So you can have a prat truss that's a really tall truss, and then pony prats are are kind of reduced in scale. I'm going to show you a, uh, an example of a lattice truss that's that's actually pretty incredible. Is anybody here from the Hoosier Railroad? Bob Barkus or Bob Albert? They're gonna miss this. Uh, so here's here in wood. Here's Indiana's two most common examples of covered bridges. So you have the How Truss, uh, which is the bottom one, and that, think of that. So if you see, if you're ever on a covered bridge and you see a lot of X's, those are How Trusses, and then the the Burt Arch, which is a series of its arches on either side, and then they're supported by intermittent members that kind of help keep it rigid. Both of those are in, in uh, Putnam County. Have anybody seen these kind of bridges? I mean, these, these are pretty common. It, it would be rare to not, or to have a covered bridge in Indiana that is not one of these two, or at least some kind of variation of those. Um, so this is what I mean by, once you get hired to do one thing, then all of a sudden you, know, you, you become the expert. And they haven't figured out that I'm not an expert yet, so we're just gonna keep that here. <laughs> Uh, so in 2017, I got hired to do three bridges, two covered bridges, uh, the last two covered bridges in um, Ripley County, and then this really fabulous stone arch bridge I'm going to show you here in a second. Is that not cool? So, and two different photos of construction of that bridge. Now, you know, I think of stone bridges, I typically think of much earlier than this, but because of the materials that they had and because they had a bridge contractor that was really familiar with how to do this, they were still doing these stone bridges when we were doing concrete bridges. So um, 1909 is, is pretty late for a, for a stone arch. But that's just a, it's down by Friendship, Indiana, if, if anybody knows kind of where that's at in Ripley County. And I'm gonna pray that this works. So, Jeff Chamberlain back there. We say, hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Jeff is a Jeff is a, a drone expert. I'm going to call you an expert. Um, but uh, he tagged along with me on a couple of projects. Um, it was interesting. So when uh, 
when I first started thinking about how to better show for the, the state and the National Park Service, how to better show context for bridges, um, that's when I kind of had the idea to, to get a drone up in the air because it shows you how the, the bridge lays in connection to the transportation pattern and to the, to the rivers um, or streams that it cross. So um, Jeff followed me along on, on several bridges and then my nephew, John Gerard, also followed me along on a, on a couple as well. So I'm gonna hope that this works. Um, I have had bad luck with the video, but we're gonna try this. And Jeff, I'm not gonna promise you that I picked out the best video, you know? So if, if it looks really bad, just remember he's in college for this, so I'm sure it's gonna get better. Let's see. <laughs> See, he does that to me all the time. What did you do? Come the little finger. Little hands. Yay! 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 I don't know how she exactly what it was that she did, but so anyway, uh, there's 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 more videos. So you get the sense now of why this becomes important, even more so than just documentation of buildings. Um, partly because I don't always want to wade in the water. Oh well, let's we'll let it go one more time since yeah. it's loaded up. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. All right. That's very cool. Yeah. So, and you guys should know, that impressed the folks with Indiana Landmark so much that they asked Jeff to do another nine bridges, Jeff. Yeah. So then uh, in 2019, um, then I get contacted by Carroll County and they said, hey, we've got some bridges to list. So uh, I did their uh, covered bridge that was not listed. I think they have two or three. And then, um, <clears throat> and then also they have again, uh, some stone arches, and these actually, two of these, go over the old uh, Wabash and Erie Canal. So uh, they had a bridge builder by the name of Kennedy um, who was you know, putting these things up in the early 1900s, and uh, there was two, two right in Delphi and then one north of Delphi uh, that he did um, with the stone arches. Here's the, here's the lattice truck bridge. This is a really fabulous bridge. This is owned by the Hoosier Valley Railroad. So their uh, railroad, even though it's not, they don't have rails to it, it is part of a trail system that is in the works. Um, and this actually crosses the Tippecanoe River uh, just uh, west of Monterey. And you're not supposed to go out there but you could probably walk down. No, I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> but they do own the they do own the rail bed. Just stay on the rail bed. But it's just a fabulous bridge. Should um, you be able to hear with not a deaf ghost? Oh no, no, yeah, no. You should be able. To, it, and you're not going to get hit by a train on here unless it's a ghost train. <laughs> Johnny Cash have a song like that. Um, so uh, this was actually built in 1882, um, and there's piers that carry it over the river, and you can see where then they added a second track in, what, by 1913 they added a second track. So they added to the width of the, the piers to carry the, to carry the railroad. All right, have Iris on standby. Okay. What did she say to do? She told me she had a little hand, she said. So am I just supposed to? Oh, okay. This is another one of Jeff's. Hopefully nobody gets vertigo on this one. <laughs> what bridge is this one? 
This is the the bridge over the tip canoe. This is the railroad bridge over the tip canoe. That you just showed? Yeah. Okay. Anybody wonder if John and Ashley are still together? <laughs> <laughs> I will warn you, there is no deck on this bridge, so you do have to, I'm not encouraging you to go on the bridge. <laughs> That's us in the upper corner there. All right. And then, how many go down to Little Nashville to vacation and stuff? Has anybody been to this little bridge, the Dean Blossom Bridge? So they say it's the most photographed bridge in Indiana. I can believe it because when you have a half million visitors that go to Brown County in the fall, um, I can believe that. So. Uh, was hired to, to do this bridge, 1880. This actually carries the original route north out of Nashville. So if you're, if you're familiar with Highway 135 that goes into Nashville, that's not the original road. It's actually, the original road is to the west. But when they built that in the 30s, you know, they decided to do away with all the sharp curves and covered bridges along the way. I just thought this, this is such a great abstract kind of photo. So my nephew John actually took this photo, um, but this was after the leaves were off the trees and, and it's just a, I think it's a really pretty photo. But this is, this is Jess. I'm taking you across a covered bridge today. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the other side, right? This is my old truck. I miss my old truck. Um, and then in uh, 2021, Jennings County has exactly two covered bridges left. They hired me to, to come and list theirs. Uh, what's really interesting about the uh, James, or yeah, the James Covered Bridge is that the county commissioners were shamed into building this because there was a funeral and nobody could get the body to the cemetery. So they just went on and on in the newspapers about how shameful it was that they, you know, couldn't cross the river. So um, just a couple more great bridges. And this is actually my nephew's. Sorry, Jeff. I didn't have you shoot this one. Yeah, and he put music to it. The pressure's on. <laughs> that, uh, John, John was trying to take the, the drone across the bridge, and if you're familiar with covered bridges, um, some of them have those little openings, little windows, you know, and it was kind of a windy day and he, he had, you know, accommodated for that when he took it up in the air, but when he was taking it across the bridge, it caught a gust of wind and the, and the drone ended up over to the side. And, and you know, if you look down at those covered bridges, they've got an opening along the, along the floor. And I, he was in panic mode, so he's like, we're not doing that again. So, <laughs> so now, this might be my second favorite bridge in Indiana, and partly because like, I got to know the story of it. And if you remember, I, I mentioned a fellow named Jim Cooper, who uh, was really interested in this bridge. Uh, Jim passed away um, about two years ago, but he wanted to see this bridge listed and was not in his ability to, to do it. And so Indiana <coughs> Landmarks contacted me and <clears throat> they said, hey, we, we've got this great bridge. Um, do you want to work on it? And of course, yes. 
so this uh, this crosses uh, the little ridge, little Pigeon River between Spencer County and Warwick County. So this is that um, very at the very south end of the state. Um, this is the oldest iron bridge in Indiana, uh, and it's the only bridge of this type in Indiana. So all of a sudden, it raises the significance of this. Remember, I told you we have to take things in context. So if you list something, something can be listed as significant locally. Rarely does it ever get listed significant na or statewide, and even more rare nationally. So this is actually listed as a as a statewide significance uh, for the for this bridge. Was the river straightened? Uh, is that or is that natural that it looks so straight? It wasn't straightened. I think it's because it's between two hills. I, okay. There's video to this, so I'll I'll play that in a second. <laughs> but the interesting thing about this is that there's a date stone, but the stone, the, the stone, everything's misspelled on the date stone. I mean, it's just, a, it's a, and, and it's so worn off that you couldn't read the date either. So this took a lot of work to find the exact age of this bridge. And then that's when we realized it was the oldest one because the other iron bridges were not built until the late 1870s, early 1880s. All right. Another one of John's. It's a, it's a fairly long span. It's actually built in three sections, I think it was. Um, and they used a, um, a patented, um, they called it an A-frame, I think, or an H-frame H or A-frame, uh, patented um, steel system to uh, rest each end on. So each span rests on these these H-frames. And this is, that's the only bridge that has those in Indiana too. So all of a sudden, that's why I'm like, it, it, ra it raises its significance to a point where they said, well, you know, this is really of statewide significance. But uh, it, it, again, great little bridge. They actually founded a town on the, on the lower side of the bridge um, because the bridge was built. So they, they platted this little town and there's nothing there. There's, you know, like today, they, they had a few stores and stuff, you know, that kind of came along. But um, today, you know, there's like a, like four or five houses. But it's, it's just kind of a neat, neat little piece of Indiana history. Um, <clears throat> so then here's a handful that, that I've done uh, more recently. So uh, Carroll County, Delphi, they're very interested in their bridges. They, they, they actually... They use this as a tourism draw. Um, so this is a, a viaduct uh, that carries a um, Washington Street. No, North Street, sorry. Yeah, North Street. Uh, carries North Street over the highway. So it's actually an INDOT in, in project that built this um, in, the in 1936. It actually replaced an earlier viaduct uh, that was built when Delphi decided to come over and annex South Delphi. So South Delphi was its own little incorporated area, and when Delphi came in and annexed it, um, they actually created the road grade down to the river and um, built the first viaduct. And then the state of Indiana came along and, you know, in the 1930s, now we've got semis and they can't make the clearance of the old viaduct. So which I never complained about on South Michigan Street when I lived down there, <laughs> so it was kind of nice. But, um, so what they did is they had to use a, uh, oh goodness, a rigid frame, cast a cast rigid frame um, arch structure, and it was the first time that NDOT used it, and the, the advantage to that is they could make the top of that arch very, very thin. So, as you can tell, you know, obviously there's, um, low walls that run along the where the road is above, 
but the arch is only about you know two feet thick at the top. How many have been to Metamora? Anybody been to Metamora? A few, a few people. All right. Have you seen the Duck Creek Aqueduct? So yeah. So well, I know you've been to Metamora. You had family down there, right, Mr. Shockey? Yep. So uh, you know, this is a bridge. It carries water, but it's a bridge. Um, and it's, I think they said it's the only one that's left in the United States of, of an actual aqueduct. Um, but this is a fabulous, you know, again, it's a Burr Arch uh, style. What I've been told is that this was actually a bridge that was under construction someplace else in um, Franklin County. And then when they, it became necessary to, to create this aqueduct, they actually bought the bridge while it was being built. <clears throat> But uh, interesting thing about, and I don't know if, if, if you know that much about um, the Whitewater Canal, but when it finally uh, ended, when the canal era ended for it, uh, what had, it had become so important because so many of the little towns along the way, like they were running their mills off of this, you know, this canal system. So even though there was no transportation that was no, lo that was no longer needed on the canals, they still needed the water flow. They still needed that hydraulic uh, system. So when the canal sold to a railroad, the railroad was required to maintain the canal water to, contain, to cont continue the flow. Um, but they didn't want anybody trying to use the canal for transportation. So what they did is in Metamora, they actually built their depot over the top of the canal so that people could not use the canal any longer. Now that depot is no longer in Metamora. They actually moved it. Um, it had been moved to, it's, no, it is in Metamora. It's, it's the one that's in the visitor center now, just on the edge of town. Anybody been, ever been down inside a canal lock? I know this is not a bridge, but it's pretty fascinating. Anybody ever been down inside one? So I would encourage you, if you're looking for someplace to go, go down to Franklin County. They have, uh, there's a group that's called like Friends of the Whitewater Canal or something like that. They have created a, a biking trail, a walking trail, that goes through um, several of the canals that are still in system, that's, or that still have water still in, uh, in use. But then also they have a few of these locks that, um, are no longer carry water, and you can actually get down into these. So, I, you know, I don't know that much about canal history, but uh, I was hired to do the their Whitewater Canal uh, National Register update, and so I got to go down and get play in, in these locks. It's pretty fascinating. And so then, uh, then this is the most recent project. So, um, yeah, so. Uh, Putnam County hired me to do all nine, of, none of their covered bridges had been listed. And there's an uh, effort now by Indiana Landmarks and the state of Indiana to get all of the covered bridges listed in Indiana. Uh, this was one fail swoop to take out nine. And so um, I was hired to do that at the beginning of the year. And then um, I think there's just two, that leaves just two covered bridges left in Indiana that have not been listed. One's in Gibson County and one's in uh, Dearborn County. But, um, yeah, that was that was that was quite a day to document all those bridges, and then <clears throat> uh, Carroll County again. They're continuing on their effort to to try to uh, capture um, you know the, or market their bridges. So they're trying to list as many as they can, and so uh, they hired me to do two more concrete bridges and then uh, one uh, steel truss bridge. Now, does anybody know where this bridge is at? I'm looking at my aunt because I'm thinking she might know. Is it Kagan? No. No. But close. Is it close to me? Yeah. I know where you're talking about. Closer to where you used to live. Yes. I know where you're talking about. I just, I don't know what they call that. But Well, it's it's Chain of Lakes. It's a Chain of Lakes State yeah. Park. So yeah. it's just a little, so doesn't that look inviting? Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful little fall day, right, to walk across the bridge. So what is it about our bridges that captures our imagination? Anybody have any ideas? This is the end. My, this is the end of my presentation. So there's no more slides, <laughs> other than maybe a thank you. No, I don't think so. Nope, that's it. So I, anybody have any ideas? What is it? Takes us to the past. 
takes us to the past. Yeah? Especially when you walk across a, a covered bridge. Because mm -hmm. you get the sound and, and the smell of the timbers. Anybody else have any ideas? I think there's just a romantic something about going across, especially like just the, the covered bridges particularly, but um, just a bridge, like you got engaged on a bridge. Yeah. There's just some kind of a romance thing associated well, with Well, so my wife was not catching on to this one. <laughs> I'm, I'm the guy that tends to be a little more like of the symbolic, right? You know, and so we, I used to live above the Chamber of Commerce, which I think is now the Mayor's Conference Room. And so we were dating. And so I recreated our first date, which we went from the apartment and dumped off the recycling. Remember when there used to be recycling in uh, Harvey Mart's parking lot? So we, we took the recycling down and we, we walked around the block and came back across the covered bridge. And so I'm thinking she's going to pick up on this. I even took her to the restaurant that we'd eaten dinner at. You know, the same. She, she was not picking up on this. And we're standing on the bridge. Jack's heard this story. I know he's heard this story. We're standing on the bridge and I'm talking about how, you know, the, the bridge brings two sides together and it spans troubled waters and, you know, and all this kind of, you know, like, like on, you know, like I'm just waxing rather poetic. I did have it kind of planned out in my head. And she is saying, oh, look at those ducks down there. And then, and then she's spitting over the railing to try and hit the ducks. And, you know, it, when I got down on one knee, then all of a sudden things kind of clicked in. But, yeah, so it was a very romantic idea. But I think it takes two people to, you know, to pick up on the vibe. But, you know. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, you know, I had, bridges can be symbolic, right? I mean, they, they tie communities together. They, they tie people together. And so I, I do think that there's probably something about that. There's the slower pace I mentioned. Um, walking across a bridge is far more fun than driving across it. I don't know why. I always feel like I'm going to fall in. But um, that slower pace to be able to actually look down at the water below you. I think there's something about being suspended in air. Too. I think that that's probably part of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, almost like you're between sky and the earth, and there's something very spiritual about that and the water that passes under. I think when I was looking at all of the different types of bridges, how they came up with doing that, who, who put that all together to make those bridges like that? I mean, you know, really, that was kind of an evolution of yeah. uh, architecture and uh, yeah. Practicality, yeah. I mean, it's just too cool. Not, or you just go a couple of things across a brick and you drive. Right, a couple, a couple of walks. Uh, well, I mean, you go, go back to Romans, right, who, who built the, the aqueducts and their, their stone bridges. Um, and the technology that we're doing today isn't so different. I mean, they, the, the Romans were the ones that came up with concrete. Um, and they actually created more of a self healing concrete. Who was it that was telling us that? Derek, it was, uh, we were having that conversation. Brian. It was Brian, Brian Main, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's, I, I am just flabbergasted. The the one bridge that, that I was hired to do in Delphi, or um, in Carroll County, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the, the town, but it crosses the Wabash River. And it is just a remarkable engineering feat. I mean, like, think about the fact that not only did you have to actually build this thing, but you had water, too, to deal with. So, um, you know, in, in the situation with that one in Carroll County, they had created a large uh, berm, earthen berm, to be able to work on the bridge and then funnel all the water around it. So, I, you know, it's, it's, but it's remarkable. Like, you know, just the, the thought, thought to, you know, the engineering that goes into something like that. I always think, well, I think, the first time I ever really thought about bridges too much was going over the Mississippi in St. Louis. Isn't yes. that Missis the Mississippi? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And just thinking about how how much easier life became because of a bridge, mm. you know that, in, and in every case, the, the 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 getting from one bank to the other was such a struggle, and then there was a bridge. Yeah, a number of the earlier bridges, they just forded the stream. Right. So a lot of the covered bridges. Um, were not like a second generation, they were the first bridge. And, you know, in fact, the one, um, that one that was moved in Shelby County, that was called, uh, Clo I think it's Clover Ford Bridge or something like that, because the bridge was at the Ford, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they had a Ford at the two. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you talk about just the, the complexity. Mm -hmm. So think about in 2018 when we were dealing with the flood, almost all of our bridges were closed because we didn't know structurally, you know, if they were sound enough to go over. And I, I'll never forget, uh, so I was county commissioner then, and, uh, oh goodness, the, the principal's name, past principal, Jack, what, what was that? Plumber? Yeah. Plumber. No, before him. Jack Davis. No. <laughs> uh, why can't I think of it? was principal in I, superintendent, I'm sorry, superintendent. Oh, Hartley. Yeah, yes, Mr. Hartley uh, called me up because school had been closed for like a week at that point because, you know, they, you know, take they didn't want to take school buses over the bridges. And I remember I was uh, came back, I was out of town briefly that weekend where things had really gotten bad and went over to kind of look at things at Jefferson Street because the county commissioners were the ones that had closed the bridges. And the sidewalks did this, and I'm like, if the sidewalks are failing at the bridge, I don't want a school bus to go over the bridge. Let's let's be safe, safer than sorry, right? And so uh, I, yeah, I, I said, you know, we're we're going to have one more day until our bridge engineers come in and take a look at things. And sure enough, you now with Jefferson Street, it fortunately there was scouring, but the scouring had not taken you know anything away from the abutments so we were able to open the bridge but i i didn't want that on my conscience god forbid something out the kids walking across the bridge yeah. you know but yeah when you're a, a town that is surrounded with bridges and surrounded with water which is why we have bridges um you know that mm -hmm. all Think of a sudden it becomes very inconvenient yeah. when you uh yeah you your two to, methods were fording it yeah. or floating across yeah. Yeah. And you know, like in the case of a huge river like the Mississippi, that was very complex. And now we just sort of drive over that don't, bridge. Don't and, think about it. Yeah, I think about I it. I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like there's always something in the pit of my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it never bothered me until, I don't know if anybody remembers this, but I think it was like about in the early to mid 90s, there was a massive bridge collapse in Oklahoma, I think it was. It was an interstate bridge. Does anybody remember this? Yeah. Oh, there were several people who lost their life in that. Yeah. yeah, no, we don't need an infrastructure bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, any, any other thoughts about bridges? Yeah. Yeah. What does it take yeah. to maintain those covered bridges for you know 140 years? I mean, were those were those uh, uh, dilapidated and then restored, or did somebody continue to paint them and maintain the roofs and that sort of thing in that time? Uh, yes, um, very few had gotten to the point where they were beyond like in that dilapidated kind of situation. The, there's one bridge in Fountain County that's the oldest covered bridge. I think I showed a photo of it, I'm not positive. But they they have now, it was closed, it was bypassed. And uh, now they closed it to pedestrians too because they it's, it's in that state of, of disrepair. Uh, for the most part, counties have seemed like they've, with the covered bridges, seem like they understand that it's kind of a draw for their county. And so like Park County, you know, they're covered bridge festivals coming up. Um, so, you know, as long as you can keep a good roof on it, right? So many of these had wood shingle roofs and they were replaced with metal. Uh, most of them are metal today. Um, but as long as you can keep a good roof on it and keep the water from, you know, getting into too much of the timber, then you're, you're, you're in pretty good position. You had a comment. Did you go back to Mansfield after bridge was rebuilt? Where there, there was a, somebody burned that bridge down. They spent about, 
I think they collect about hundred thousand dollars from people to rebuild that bridge. Yes, uh, in in Mansfield. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Rowan had the same thing happen. Somebody was an arsonist that that lit their bridge on their covered bridge on fire. Right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, just think if you didn't have bridges, you, you wouldn't have had that Simon and Garfunkel song. Because you were in trouble water? I wonder if I would have broken out into song, you know, during the engagement, the proposal. I wonder if that probably would not be the right song to. No, the one by the judge, Love Can Build a Bridge. Oh, there you go. She said by the judge, Love Can Build a Bridge. Makes far more sense. Yeah, we have songs about them. I mean, come on. All right, well, is there anything else? I don't want to keep anybody. It's one o'clock. Yeah. Okay, one more question. I was looking through um, stuff and I put an article in the paper about when the farmers sued to get the mill taken down and the river straightened between Bremen and Plymouth. And they uh, took a bridge and they lifted it up and they set it on the side of the bank. Hmm. Then the dredge came through, but they never say what happened to the bridge. Do you know? Where was that at? Because South of Bremen, north of Plymouth. Oh, well, we found where they moved a railroad bridge <laughs> no, on the north side of Bremen. We well, found they, where they moved a railroad bridge to send the dredge through. Maybe that's it. We never, we always wondered, I, I couldn't find where they put it back because once the dredge came through, the river was wider. And would the bridge even fit side I, to side? You might be thinking of the bridge on the west side of Bremen because Bremen is almost surrounded by the it could be west. It said yeah, it was. Because they did that on the west side as well. Okay, yeah. They picked it up and swung it to the side, but they never said whether they ever put it back. <laughs> Somebody probably would ask for us to be put back, I would think. I just thought you'd know. Uh, <laughs> I said I have a lot of useless information. I didn't say I have all the useless information. I just have a lot of it. That's your homework. All right, well. Uh, thank you, everybody, and, and thanks again to you.